Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number nine on learning to use your BeagleBone Black Rev-C microcontroller. What we're going to do today is we are going to learn how to do analog reads uh, using the analog input pins. If you went through the series of lessons with us on the Raspberry Pi, you saw that there was all types of amazing things that we could do with the Raspberry Pi and in fact we love the Raspberry Pi except for we got to the point with the Raspberry Pi that we found there were no analog input pins. If we get all those GPIO pins we can do digital out, we can simulate analog out with PWM or we can do digital in, but we could not do analog in. And for many, many projects, you really need to know how to, you really need to have a technique to do analog in. For instance, if you want a knob that controls things, you're, res you're basically res uh, reading the resistance of a voltage divider or a pot potentiometer, uh, flex sensors, all types of different sensors you need to be able to do analog input. So the major limitation of our old friend, the Raspberry Pi, Model 2 was that it could not do analog inputs. That's what really motivated us to go out and start learning about the BeagleBone Black. In our earlier lessons on the BeagleBone Black, we have already learned how to do a digital write. We've learned how to simulate an analog output using PWM. And then uh, more recently, we learned how to do digital reads. And so on the last lesson, we could read the state of buttons. And so we've learned how to do all that. But now we are ready to learn how to actually read input, uh, uh, read analog inputs. We do that from the analog input pins. And there's a couple of things very, very, very important. The analog input pins are shown here in our pin diagram. You can go to toptechboy.com, go to your BeagleBone Black lessons, and go to lesson uh, one, and you can find this pin out. And what you see is, is that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven analog input pins. Those are the pins that are highlighted in blue. That is on header P9. So if you orient your BeagleBone Black like this. This is your P9 header and then these are the inputs that you can use for analog inputs. Very important! These inputs only want to see 0 to 1.8 volts. Do not put 3.3 volts on it and do not put 5 volts on it. You need to have when you're creating your, your voltage references, when you're creating your voltage divider, you need to use not more than 1.8 volts and that way there is no way that these pins will see more than 1.8 volts because if they do you can burn out these pins or you can actually fry the entire BeagleBone Black so be very careful. What is very convenient and what is very nice is the folks that put the board together were kind enough to give us a 1.8 volt reference output which is on this header P9 pin 32 this VDD ADC is 1.8 volts and so that is the reference volt, uh, reference voltage that we are going to use when we uh, uh, create a voltage divider. In today's lesson I create a voltage divider using a potentiometer just to demonstrate the concept. You can also use here the ground, the ADC ground, and so this ground sort of goes with that, uh, that 1.8 volts. I really don't know if this ground is connected to the other grounds or not, but since it's labeled uh, the analog to digital ground, we should use that one. So we are using pin 32 as our reference and pin 34 as our ground and we are going to use pin 33 as the center tap over here. Uh, actually on the uh, toptechboy.com, the most excellent lesson number nine of the Beagle Black, I give you a pin out of the circuit that you need to build in order for us to move forward here. This circuit, you can try to figure it out by looking at this jumbled mess, or you can come over here and look neatly and see that I have the potentiometer. The top leg of the potentiometer is connected to that VDD, the one with the 1.8 volts. Then this is the VDD, the analog ground. Be sure to use those two. And then I'm using this pin as the center tap for the center tap of the potentiometer. Let's go back and look at that real quick. <coughs> Uh, to give you some pin numbers, I am using pin 32 as the top tap. I am using pin 34 as the ground 
on the potentiometer and I am using pin 33 pin 33 as the uh, pin that we're going to read off of. So we're using 34 or we're using 32, 33, and 34 on the P9 header. <clears throat> what you can go ahead and do is you can go ahead and get a potentiometer and hook this, uh, hook this circuit up. Sometimes people say, well, why did I not just connect this directly to ground? When I use ground, the number one, when I'm looking and helping students, the number one reason that I see students having problem with their circuits is, is that they don't have their grounds hooked together. They have, they have one ground over here and another ground over here, and they don't hook them together. So what I like to do on a project, no matter what it is, I always come off the ground, tap, and I create a ground rail. And then if I want a ground, I tap off of my ground rail. That way, if I'm putting other things in the circuit, I'm always going to make sure that I have a common ground. Just a little tip there. You guys go ahead and build this circuit, and then we will be ready to write some code. <coughs> Bring up a terminal window now on your uh, BeagleBone Black. If you don't know how to do that, go back look at lesson number one and two, and we show you how to get your BeagleBone up and running. And uh, let's go. I'm going to change directory to my home directory. Uh, where am I? You can see that I am in the root directory. I created a folder, mkdir, called my Python, and I put my folders in my Python. If you have not done that, you can go ahead and do that. I've done it, so I'm not going to try to do it again because it would give me an ugly message. If I do an ls, you can see there's my folder, my Python. I always like to go down in that folder, and that way I don't have to keep putting my path names in. So I'll put cd my Python. Okay, now let's create a program that will read from the center tap of this potentiometer and read out a volt for us. So we will go nano, uh, and then what will we call this? Uh, read, uh, let's see, analog n.py, like that. So we're going to call our program analog n.py. What's the first thing? So we're now in nano. We're now in our text editor, and we are writing our Python program. First thing we need to do is import the Adafruit library, Adafruit underscore bbio dot adc as a dc. That's analog and digital converter. Uh, if you have the uh, latest version of the Debian operating system, Wheezy 7, uh, running on your uh, BeagleBone Black RevC, that's what came with my RevC. It will have this library on there so you can import it and it will happily import it without a problem. If you type this in exactly right and you get an error, that means that you don't have that library. You need to go back and update and upgrade your operating system to the, the latest uh, Debian uh, image and then that should, the Debian for, uh, for BeagleBone image and that should get you where this works. I have not heard of anyone that has had a problem with this. Okay, what do I need to do? I need to activate now my AD, uh, my analog to digital converting pin. So I say ADC dot setup. I don't have to give it any parameters. This will go in and set up all the pins for me. I need to put delays in my program, so I need to import the time library. So I'm going to say uh, uh, from time import import sleep. This will let me use the sleep function to delay things. I need to set up my analog pin, so I'm going to say analog pin. Which pin am I using? Analog pin equals which pin am I using? It was on header 9, and then it was pin 33, and uh, like that. I am going to go back and check that just to make sure. Let's go back and look here. I was using this one, which is pin 33. So that looks good. Uh, analog pin is equal to P933. I always like to name my pin. I don't have to keep going back and checking and trying to remember what I'm doing. I can remember analog pin here. I'm going to create a loop while 
one. This will loop forever. Why? Because one is always one. This is like saying true is true. Well, true is always true. And then the colon indicates that I'm starting my clause. In Python, we indicate the clause with uh, indents. So I tab over. It doesn't matter how fat, far you tab over, but you have to keep it perfectly aligned once you start your tabbing to stay in this clause. I'm going to read my center tap off the potentiometer now. I go pot value. I'm going to call it pot value for potentiometer value is equal to adc dot read. I'm going to read it and then what am I going to read? Which pin? Analog pin. Okay. And now I'm going to say print and what am I going to print? The potentiometer value is colon space and I'm going to close that off and then what am I going to print? I'm going to print pot value. I'm going to put a little delay in here. Sleep .5 and then that looks good. That looks like a good program. Control O to write out Enter and then Control X. All right, let's see if we can run this program. We're going to uh, Python, and then this is my file name. I am in that folder with the file, so I don't have to put any uh, any path names there. And so let's start this thing up. Okay, we are reading a value of 0.56. When I turn the potentiometer, I should see this change, okay? I can turn it all the way to the end, and it goes down to within a percent of zero, so that's very good. It reads all the way to zero. And when I turn it all the way up, it reads 0.996. So again, that's well within a percent of one. So what does this number 0 to 1 mean? It means relatively 0 to 1. So it's like what percentage of 1.8 volts am I? This is like 100% of 1.8 volts. And so this is a relative reading. It reads a percentage. It's the percentage position of the potentiometer. I'm 100% all the way to the end. Or I go back the other way and I'm... 0%, so it's a percentage. If we want to change that to the actual voltage on the center tap, well, what is my reference voltage? It's 1.8 volts. And so what I would need to do is multiply this number by 1.8 volts. And so let's stop this. Uh, Control C kills it. Let's go back and edit it again. Remember, whatever you do, you can't try to read more than 1.8 volts. Okay, remember, you cannot try to read more than 1.8 uh, more than 1.8 volts. So let's change this percentage number, this relative number, into an absolute number. We could say pot volt is equal to ADC dot. I mean, is equal to the pot value that I just read times what? Times 1.8. And then here I'll say the pot volt. Ah. I always forget that this terminal window doesn't respond to the mouse. You have to just use your arrow keys. <coughs> Is. And then here I would print pot volt pot volts like that. Okay, control O to write out, enter, and then control X. <clears throat> Let's try it again, P uh, python analog n dot pi, we run it, and now look at that. Now I'm reading a voltage, I'm reading zero, uh, I'm reading all the way over here, I am reading zero volts, and then as I come up, I can get all the way right there to just within a percent of 1.8 volts. And so now what I am reading is I am reading actual voltage. I am reading actual voltage. So if I wanted to set that potentiometer for some re reason to reference one volt, I could twist it and get it. Let's see how close I can get it there. Well, that's pretty good. Okay, right there. So you can see uh, 
I can set an actual physical voltage on that center tap of the potentiometer of 1 volt or whatever voltage I want between 0 and 1.8. Okay, guys, we have made a lot of progress in this series of lessons. We can now do analog reads. We could already do digital reads and analog writes and digital writes. And so we're getting to the point that we can do a lot of that stuff that we originally did on the Arduino microcontroller we can now do on the much more powerful BeagleBone Black. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. If you guys are liking these lessons, give me a thumbs up. Leave me some feedback, man. Leave me some comments on these things. Let me know that people are actually out there watching them. We will talk to you guys later.